Have you seen my new dress? You know, the black one with a slit up the thigh? It has a low dipped back as well. I can't find it. It was in my room, in a bag hanging up in my wardrobe, so I don't know where it could have got to. You mean the one you got the other day when we went shopping and it was like half price? Yeah, that one. Oh, I took it. Huh? What do you mean you took it? Exactly what I said. I took the dress for myself. Um, why? Well, because I wanted it. You knew that I bought that dress for tonight. I told you how this was a really important night for me. I've got a date with the man who I've been crushing on for the longest time. I wanted to look as good as I possibly could, which is why I bought the dress. This could literally be the man who I marry and I want to make a good impression on him. You literally have no idea how much I actually like this man. You need to give me back my dress right now. I mean, why did you even take it? You're not going anywhere to wear it. You didn't even ask me if you could borrow it either. You knew that I liked that dress, but you acted incredibly selfishly and took it for yourself. What? Yeah. When we were shopping, I saw the dress and I thought that it looked nice. But then you went and bought it, and it was the last one of my size. Not to mention that the store lady said that they weren't getting any more of that particular dress back in, so I couldn't go back to buy it. Also, I would never be caught dead wearing the same thing as you. So I couldn't very well order myself the dress offline knowing you had it too. So I decided I was going to take it because you took it from me first, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wearing the same thing as you. You never liked that dress. When you saw it, you said it looked cheap and tacky and you swore you would never wear something with so little class. Apparently, your style is jean, short shorts, and a bra, given what you bought that day. You only won the dress now because I liked it and bought it for myself. It's so typical of you. You always get jealous over whatever I have and you take it for yourself. But I'm not going to let you walk all over me this time. You need to give it back now. I'm not giving it back. You stole it from me first. I was only saying that it was a horrible dress so that you didn't buy it for yourself. I was going to go back for it later. So, if anything, you're the selfish one. You should have known I actually wanted the dress. I'm not arguing with you anymore about this, Debbie. I only have a couple of hours to get ready for my date. So either you can bring me the dress in the next five seconds, or I'm coming into your room and grabbing it myself. Well, you can have it anyway. I tried it on and it just didn't look right. I tried modifying it, but nothing made it fit properly. So there might be a few tears in it. Oh, and I think I might have gotten some pink nail varnish on it when I painted my nails. Oops. Are you kidding me? You've ruined my dress? How could you do that to me? It cost me a lot of money. That's it. I'm coming to get my dress to see exactly what you've done. And I'm telling mom. Whatever. As if mom is going to be bothered. You know that I'm the favorite. She doesn't care what I do. I'm really not going to be in any trouble at all. Nuh-uh. You've gone too far this time. She'll definitely have something to say this time. Yeah, okay. You keep thinking that. Phoebe, how dare you steal your sister's things? I did not raise you to be like that. What? Mom, I didn't steal anything. Debbie was the one who took my dress. The one I bought the other week, you know? I showed it to you. She went into my room and took it, and now it's totally ruined. She's ripped it and spilt nail varnish on it, and there's no way I can wear it now. Do you realize how important this evening actually is for me? Hang on. Is tonight the night of your date with that man who you've had a crush on for ages? Yes! Oh. Well, that doesn't mean that you can't share your things, though. I'm sure she didn't mean to ruin it. She probably just wanted to try it on to see if it would suit her, so that she could get one if she liked it. I know she wouldn't actually destroy it on purpose. It's just a big accident. Ugh, you always take her side. It might not matter to you, but I am fed up of Debbie taking what she wants when she wants it. There's no way I can wear this dress now. I'm going to have to wear a different one, which won't make the same impression on him. So from now on, I'm going to get a lock on my door, and if Debbie manages to take anything of mine, I'm just going to go into her room and take it back, regardless of whether she wants me in her room or not. There's no need to be so dramatic. Look, next time, maybe just ask nicely. Debbie's not unreasonable. Besides, it's been rough for her lately, breaking up with her boyfriend and all, so we need to be a bit more understanding. Mom, making excuses for her isn't going to help her. Her so-called rough patch is entirely her fault. She cheated on her boyfriend. I'm actually glad he had the sense to leave when he found out. Besides, it doesn't give her the right to take my things simply because she's bored. Now, you're just being cruel. 
Things were complicated between her and Jake. So your little sister made a mistake. She's only human. It happens. Just like with your dress. You just need to forgive her and move on. It's the best thing to do. When she apologizes, then I'll forgive her. Anyway, I need to go now if I'm going to make it to the dinner on time. Especially considering I've got to sort out a whole new outfit. I'll be back later. So I take it your dinner went well the other week? Huh? Oh, yeah, it went amazingly. We really hit it off. I've been seeing him pretty much every day for the last two weeks. We can't get enough of each other. Uh-huh, sure. I'm also guessing this new boy toy of yours bought you a new car, yeah? What on earth are you on about? Well, I just noticed that you seem to have a new car. And it's an incredibly fancy and expensive one at that. There's no way you could have afforded to buy that yourself. So I'm guessing your boyfriend got it for you? I have to admit, that's pretty smart to get some rich guy to buy you what you want. Shame I didn't think of it first. Oh, you mean the Ashton Martin in the garage? Yeah, obviously. There aren't any other fancy cars around, are there? It's not mine. I'm not stupid. I know it's yours. There's no way mom or dad could afford something like that. And the only thing that's changed recently is you've started dating that guy. I mean, looking at you, he must be pretty desperate. You're not the prettiest girl around, so if he's bribing you to be with him with a car like that, imagine what he'd buy for me to be his girlfriend. Um, he's not bribing me to be with him. And he's not desperate at all. He's incredibly handsome, in fact. And the car isn't mine. You're a rubbish liar. Anyway, I'm going to take it out for a while. I'm only telling you this because you'll just get mom to yell at me if I don't ask your permission to borrow your things. Debbie? First of all, you're not insured to drive that car, so you can't take it anywhere. Secondly, it's not even my car, so there's no way that I'm letting you drive it even an inch off of the drive. I know you're just trying to lie to me so that I don't borrow the car, but it's not going to work. I swear, Debbie, if you touch that car, you'll regret it. You could get into a lot of trouble. I mean it. It's not mine, so you can't just take it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't believe you. So stop with the pathetic excuses, okay? Anyway, I'm going to go and have a fun drive. See ya. Debbie, where are you? I told you not to take that car anywhere. I can't believe you came into my room and stole the keys for it. Answer me, Debbie. Ugh, what do you want? You better not be texting and driving. Do you know how dangerous that is? Jeez, fine. I'll pull over. Happy? Now, what do you want? Bring that car back right now. Why? Worried that everyone will think I look way cooler in it than you do? It's too late for that. I told you that it's not my car. It's my boyfriend's. Nice try, but I don't believe you. Debbie, I'm not joking. That is a very expensive car that you're driving around in, and it's not even mine. For all intents and purposes, you've stolen that car, and the owner of it, my boyfriend, would have every right to call the police for theft or something like that. Phoebe, you're rubbish at lying. I know you're just trying to get your car back simply because you don't want me driving around in it. Well, that's not going to happen. You can go and tell mom if you want, but there's nothing she can do but yell at me when I get home. For now, though, I'm going to enjoy my time, driving around in a beautiful looking car and turning as many heads as I can. I've already been approached by at least five guys wanting to talk to me about the car and giving me their phone numbers. I'm not going to give that up just because you want to be selfish and not share. Okay, fine. But don't say I didn't warn you. Warn me about what? No, no. You didn't want to know when I tried to tell you, so I'm not going to bother now. Have fun driving around looking cool whilst you can. You're just trying to scare me. Well, it's not going to work. Uh-huh. Sure. Whatever. Now leave me alone. I'm driving, don't you know? Oh, and I might have scratched the car a little bit, but you don't mind, right? It's not like you can't afford to get it repainted or whatever. Uh-huh, of course. You have fun. Don't worry about damaging the car or anything. I'm sure everything will work out just fine. If you think being calm and uncaring is going to get me to bring the car back, you're wrong, you know? Oh, I know. You won't bring the car back. But it won't be my problem for very much longer. Huh? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Phoebe! Why didn't you tell me who owned this car? Do you know how much trouble I'm in? This is all your fault. Oh, hi, Debbie. If you remember correctly, I did tell you that my boyfriend owned the car, not me. 
but you didn't tell me that your boyfriend, Max Wright, is a CEO of one of the most successful cooking industries in the world. How do you even know him? How did you meet? Well, you know, I worked as a waitress at that new, really fancy restaurant that just opened up in town. Yeah? Turns out, Max is the owner of it. He was there opening night, being the chef and trying to make sure that things went smoothly. Well, there was a bit of a hiccup at one point. Some dishes got mixed up and one of the chefs had to go to the hospital because he cut his hand really badly. I told Max, who was stressing, that I was good at cooking. I mean, I've been to culinary school and this job was just a way to try and break into the industry at a high level. So he asked me to jump in and help out the other chefs. I guess I really impressed him because at the end of the night, he came up to me and we started talking. And, well, the rest is history. Anyway, he asked me to look after the car because it was a birthday gift for his younger brother, who's turning 21 next week. You could have told me all of this before I took it out. Now I'm in a huge amount of trouble. I tried, but you just said that I was lying just so that I didn't have to share my car with you. What? But he's suing me for stealing his car. He's even threatened to get the police involved because I banged it up a bit. Well, that's your fault. I thought the car was yours. I was trying to teach you a lesson. By purposefully wrecking the car that you thought was mine? How selfish and petty can you get? Look, you're going to have to talk to Max and just explain the whole situation to him, okay? I can't afford to pay what he wants, so just tell him that you said that I could drive it. That way, it'll be your fault and I won't have to be taken to court. LOL, that's not happening. How do you think he found out about you driving it to begin with? You mean, you told him? Yep. I knew that you'd probably damage the car just to be spiteful to me, so I told Max all about what was happening. Thankfully, he told me that he understood and that it wasn't my fault. He also said that he knows your true character now, so he can avoid any tricks he might try to pull in the future. He also told me that he'd sort the car situation out and not to worry about it. Now I know what he had in mind, and I have to say, it's quite nice to see you finally facing the consequences of your actions for a change. I can't believe you would purposefully throw me under the bus like this. You are such a horrible sister. You're the one who should be going to court, not me. Why? I haven't done anything. Yes, you have. I should be the one with a handsome and rich boyfriend who buys me whatever I want. Instead, you somehow managed to trick one into being with you. You think you're so much better than me? Well, you're not. Debbie, I've never thought that I'm better than you. I've just gone about my life and found my own happiness my way. You've not worked hard for anything in your life. Instead, you just blame everyone else for all of your problems. Well, this time, there's no one else to blame but yourself. And you're going to have to face the consequences of your actions whether you like it or not. Maybe next time, you'll actually listen to me when I try to tell you not to take something that doesn't belong to you. Please, Phoebe, just take the fall for this for me. No, Debbie, it's time you actually act like an adult instead of a spoiled child. Ugh, I hate you! In the end, Max took Debbie to court over the theft and damage of his car. Debbie tried to blame everyone but herself for what had happened, but the judge simply ignored her. He ordered her to pay Max a substantial amount of money in reparations for all of the damages that she had caused to the vehicle. To do this, Debbie had to get a job at a local supermarket, which she wasn't a big fan of, but with no other way to pay Max the money, she had to stick it out. Meanwhile, mine and Max's relationship really took off. We became really close and even moved in together. We're going away this weekend and I really think he might pop the question. I can't wait. At the end of all of this though, I just hope that Debbie has learned her lesson on asking to borrow people's things and accepting that when someone says no, it means no. Boundaries are important to have and important for people to respect. And as long as Debbie doesn't do that, she'll constantly find herself in trouble. Regardless of if it's stealing a car or hurting someone's feelings, Boundaries are there for a reason, and hopefully she knows this now. Hey, sweetie, I'm going to yoga today. I'll be going in about 10 minutes. Is there anything that you'd like me to pick up for dinner or anything? No. Oh, um, okay. Is chicken okay for dinner then? Sure, sounds fine. Okay. I'll pick some veg up from the shop after my class then. We can have a Sunday dinner, even though it's Tuesday. LOL. Uh-huh, if that's what you like. Um, okay. Anyway, I've got to go now, otherwise I'll be late for the class. See you soon. See you soon. Ugh, I cannot believe that woman. June again? Yeah. 
Ah, oh, jeez. What did she do this time? Okay, well, I was in my yoga class, just minding my own business and talking to Jennifer whilst we waited for the instructor. When June came in and started going on at me about how I shouldn't be in the class because I simply don't have the body type to look good whilst doing it. She also started saying that I couldn't do all of the poses properly, so that I should just give up. That's just June being as horrible as always. She's always looking for ways to rile you up and just be horrible to you. Personally, I'd have pushed her over during one of the poses and embarrass her beyond belief. LOL, yeah, I know she's usually horrible and usually I can just ignore her or annoy her back, but today she crossed the line. What did she do? She said that, basically, she was annoying me as a way to assert dominance or something stupid like that. I mean, honestly, who does that? And just to make themselves feel better? Whoa, wait, what? Yeah, it was completely ridiculous. That's insane. God, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to come to the class today. I'd have put her in her place. I know, I almost did. Well, can't you tell Sean about this? Surely he could do something as a trainee lawyer, right? Like, get her done for harassment or something? I don't know, maybe. Although lately he's been acting strange. Like, he's not been as open and talkative to me. I don't want to stress him out more, you know? Well, maybe you should talk to him about it. If something is wrong, then communication is the best bet to sort anything out. I'm sure he's probably just under a lot of stress at work and just needs to talk to someone. Yeah, you're probably right. I'll have a talk with him and see if I can just straighten this whole thing out. Okay, well, I'm here if you need me at all. Thanks. I'll make sure to keep you up to date with whatever happens. Though I'm sure it won't be anything interesting. Okay then, speak to you soon. And you. Um, hey Sean, are you able to talk? Sure, I guess. Why? Well, I just wanted to talk to you and ask you some things. Hurry up then, I haven't got all day. Okay then. Why have you been acting so strange lately? What do you mean? I've not been acting strange. Um, yes you have. You've been acting incredibly cold towards me lately. Always giving me short and sharp replies. I honestly feel like I've done something to upset you, but I have no clue what it is. Have I done anything? Because I can't sort it out if you don't let me know. I just want us to go back to how we were. Well, I can't help it if I'm busy lately, can I? I don't have time for days off and stuff at the minute. I'm under a lot of pressure to help with this huge case that I'm on, so if I'm a bit snappy and short with you, it's really not my fault. I understand that you're under a lot of pressure at work, and if I could help you with that, I would. But you also need to understand that work doesn't always come first. You need to be able to prioritize what you do and make sure that you have a good work-life balance. Otherwise, how else are we supposed to spend time together as a couple? Well, I can't exactly do that at the minute. It's just not possible. So, you'll just have to get over it, Jessica? Jessica? Who's Jessica? Uh, um, no one. It, it was just a typo. My name is nowhere close to sounding like Jessica, so I doubt it was a typo. Who is she? Sh she's no one. Just a woman I work with. She's, uh, like, the, the secretary on the case. She makes all the important notes and makes sure that we, we, we don't forget or miss anything. I have to message her quite a bit. That's probably why her, her name popped up in my keyboard shortcuts. Uh-huh. So you wouldn't mind if I spoke to this Jessica then? What? Why, why would you want to do that? Well, if you're working together, it might be nice to get to know her, don't you think? Maybe we could invite her around for dinner one of the evenings. And the rest of your team. They might enjoy a meal together, strengthen the team bond, and it might even give you a few brownie points and have you go up in their decision on who to promote to the firm. What do you think? No, that that's, that's okay. It's not needed at all. Why not? It's not a bad idea. I just don't want to mix work in private life. But you already do that. You're constantly bringing your work home with you. So why can't we invite everyone to dinner? I just think that it would be unprofessional. Fine then. I'll just message this Jessica person and ask her out for some drinks with me and Linda. I'd like to get to know her. Well, I, I don't want you to. Well, tough. I can ask her for drinks if I want to. God, fine. Well, you want me to admit it? I've been cheating on you with Jessica. You happy now? Oh, yeah. 
so happy to find out that my husband has been cheating on me with some random woman. Hey, you're the one who pushed me to admit it. You could have just continued living in blissful ignorance and we, we could have gone along just fine. But for some reason, you decided to message me to... To what? Confront me about this? How did you even know I was doing something? I didn't message you to confront you about cheating. I just wanted to talk to you about your attitude lately. But when you started acting suspiciously, well, I couldn't just ignore it. I don't want to be with someone who would do such a thing to me. Well then, what are you going to do? You'll never find someone as good as me, so I don't think it would be worth it divorcing me. Unless you want to be seen as a loser by everyone. <laughs> I don't care what everybody else thinks. I'm definitely not staying with you. Not after you've just admitted to cheating on me. I'd have to be a fool to stay with you now. I mean, who would want to be stuck with such an arrogant and horrible person as their husband? Not me, that's for sure. Well, it's your loss then, isn't it? I know that you'll never find a man like me ever again. I'm the best thing that you'll ever have. Anyone else simply won't compare to me. I'm smart, handsome, and soon enough, I'll be very rich as well when I become a fully-fledged lawyer. You'll be sorry if you leave me. Oh, please. There are men who have good jobs and who are smart and handsome just like you. The only difference is that they are also kind and wouldn't even dream of cheating on the person that they love. Unlike you, they actually have a conscience and a sense of loyalty. It's not my fault that you simply aren't interesting enough to hold my interest. Oh, and I'm guessing that this Jessica is? Yes, she is. She understands me in a way that you don't. She's so much better than you. In fact, if you want to divorce me, then so be it. I'll just be with Jessica. Fine. If you want to do that, then so be it. I'll send the divorce papers over to you. Sounds good to me. Linda, are you there? Tilly, is everything okay? No, not really. Sean just confessed that he's been cheating on me. He what? Yeah, I messaged him to ask why he'd been so moody lately, and then things escalated until he called me Jessica. I asked him who she was, and he eventually told me that she was the woman he'd been cheating on me with. What a sleazeball! I know. I just told him that I'd send him some divorce papers through soon. There's no way that I can stay with him now. No, I don't think anyone would expect you to. Do you want to come to mine for tonight? I've got more than enough space for you. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. You're a true friend. It's not a problem. We can come up with all the ways that Sean's a jerk whilst watching sappy rom-coms and eating ice cream. Yeah, I'd like that. Okay. Well, just head on over when you're ready. I've got spare clothes you can have, so you don't need to return home if you don't want to. Okay, I'll head over now then. Thanks, Lind. It's no problem. It's what best friends do. I'll see you soon then. Oh my god. Did you actually see yourself in yoga class today? You look like a flailing whale, lol. June? How on earth did you get my number? Well, that's easy. I asked the instructor for it. I said that you'd left behind some of your equipment and that I wanted to return it to you. It was quite easy, really, to get a hold of your number. Oh, jeez. Look, just lose my number and leave me alone, okay? I don't want to talk to you or deal with your attitude. I just don't have the energy right now. Oh, boo-hoo. I'm not just going to go away because you're too much of a coward to face me. A coward? Yep. Clearly my dominance is just too much for you. It's pathetic. You really shouldn't even bother coming to yoga anymore if you can't even stand up for yourself against me. Although, I am quite amazing, so obviously you wouldn't be able to compete with me. June, you're really not that great. Anyone is better than you. That's just a fact. That's not what your husband thinks. What do you mean? I slept with your husband, lol. I know we'll be perfect together. I'm no longer married. We divorced last year. Huh? What do you mean you divorced last year? Are you really that much of a pathetic loser that you can't even keep a husband? LOL. No, I'm actually not. I'm just smart enough to know what my worth is. And it's much more than staying with a man who would rather cheat on me than be true to me. Well, you can't really blame him, can you? Why would he want to stay married to such a dull and ugly little woman? Especially when he could have someone amazing, like me. Yeah, I guess so. However, 
No, you don't want to be bored by silly nonsense. I wish you the best with him. What? Are you trying to scare me? It's not going to work. Yeah, that's fine. I won't bother you with it. Well, now that you've brought it up, you might as well tell me what you want to tell me. Are you sure? Whatever, just tell me already. Well, I've heard that Sean has quite a dirty little secret. And what's that then? Apparently, in the years since we've been divorced, Sean has been with quite a lot of women, including some that he's paid for. Well, so what? It's not like people aren't allowed to have a little bit of fun. No, of course not. I just hope you've been being safe, if you know what I mean. Not that it's any of your business. Why should I care if we haven't? Oh, no reason. Just that a few of the women Sean has been with left him with some not very nice surprises. Ones that, if not monitored and dealt with properly, could be passed on to other people. Should he choose not to tell his partners about them. Wait, what? Just thought you should know. Oh god, why didn't you tell me? How was I supposed to know that you were going to sleep with my ex-husband? Besides, he has nothing to do with me now. You should take your argument to him. I only went with him to anger you and to show you that I'm better than you. But now, no one will want to be with me ever again. Well, maybe if you hadn't been so focused on trying to be horrible to other women and getting one up on them, you wouldn't have found yourself in this situation. The only reason you even wanted to be with Sean was because you thought he was my husband. Now look where your selfish and vile behavior has gotten you. Ugh, but- I suggest you get yourself to a hospital and get checked out, just in case. Anyways, I'm going to go now. I'm free to live my life how I want to, finally, and I'm not going to waste it talking to you. I'm going to block you now, so don't bother trying to message me or anything because I won't reply. Hang on, you can't just go like that. You're supposed to be the one who's devastated, not me. This isn't fair. It's not how it's supposed to go. Uh-huh. Well, you can go and have a tantrum over the fact that your plan to be dominant or whatever didn't work. I've got a fun afternoon at the spa to go and enjoy. See ya. No, don't you dare go. You need to be the one who's upset, not me. Tilly, get back here. After that, I heard that June did actually go to the hospital to get checked out like I suggested. Unfortunately for her, the doctors did actually find that she had a couple of transmitted diseases, which she would have to take medication for. After learning about her ailments, June became incredibly angry at Sean and ended up having a long argument with him, which resulted in the two splitting up. As for Sean, he obviously had the diseases as well and also had to go on medication for them. However, word of his exploits got out, thanks to June, and no other woman wanted to be with him after that. Not that I would blame them. I also heard that he was fired from his law firm due to his poor attitude. As for me, I have gone on to do all the things I had always wanted to do, but was held back from doing so by Sean. I haven't committed myself to another relationship yet, as I am happy being single for the time being. However, I have started talking to someone, so I will see how this goes. Either way, he is much better than Sean was already, so I don't think I have anything to worry about. Remember, ladies, it's always better to support one another instead of trying to bring each other down. Being there for one another, like Linda was for me, is much more of a dominant trait than trying to steal someone's husband, which is actually seen as quite cowardly and underhanded.